Hello again. So this will be a talk on chronic myelogenous leukemia. And chronic myelogenous leukemia is a leukemia that affects the non-lymphocytic cell lines. So we have myeloid cell lines, which include the red blood cells, the, the platelets, and white blood cells, which are uh, not lymphocytes, so basophil, neutrophil, eosinophils, and uh, monocytes. And then, uh, of course, the, uh, the uh, lymphoid line produces lymphocytes. So chronic myelogenous leukemia is a leukemia of the, uh, the non-lymphoid uh, lines. So leukemia in general, uh, just to uh, recall, is, uh, is an increase in, in production of a, a clonal line of cells. You may, see these, uh, you, you may see this line of cells in the peripheral circulation. In chronic leukemia, you don't tend to see uh, it as much to the same degree as you would see it in acute leukemia, but you may see immature uh, cells in, uh, in chronic leukemia on a peripheral smear. So, but it's not as common as in acute leukemia. Okay, overview of chronic myelogenous leukemia, or CML. So this is a chronic myeloproliferative disorder which affects one of the myeloid lines of white blood cells. Generally, it tends to be neutrophils. However, it's never lymphocytes. Why is it never lymphocytes? Because if it was a disease affecting proliferation of the lymphocytes, you would have CLL, chronic uh, Lymph, uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So chronic myelogenous leukemia tends to be a, a, a disease of neutrophils, but it could be any line of, uh, of in the myeloid uh, family. So characteristically, CML has a very specific mutation, and that is a translocation, a reciprocal translocation between chromosomes 9 and 22. And this results in an abnormal protein and ultimately abnormal proliferation of cells. So uh, what this is, is you get part of chromosome 9 moving over to chromosome 22 and part of chromosome 22 moving over to chromosome 9. And the result of that is that you get this protein that normally would not develop. And what it is, is it's called a fusion protein, BCR-ABL. And this fusion protein leads to the chronic myelogenous leukemia. In 95% of patients with chronic myelogenous leukemia, they have this translocation. And so detecting this translocation is a very good test for uh, determining whether the patient has CML. And we'll see that uh, later on. So in the early stages of disease, like in any chronic leukemia, it's very indolent. Uh, so the patient may not even remember when their symptoms came on. And a lot of the symptoms are nonspecific and constitutional. Uh, you may have symptoms of anemia. You may have symptoms of uh, maybe thrombocytopenia. But in general, what you have are constitutional symptoms. So fatigue, night sweats, low-grade fever, uh, and so forth. Difficulty sleeping, usually due to the night sweats, uh, and uh, etc. So uh, the constitutional symptoms are certainly going to be uh, most prominent. However, constitutional symptoms, as you know, are not at all specific. So uh, in addition, in chronic myelogenous leukemia, you may see splenomegaly, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to diagnose CML on uh, symptoms alone. So a long history of these constitutional symptoms are uh, sort of what we see in CML. Most commonly, the way we diagnose CML is not based on the symptoms or any specific test, but it's due to an elevated white blood cell count, an abnormally elevated white blood cell count. Normally, your white blood cell count tends to be around 7 to 11,000, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Uh, but in patients with CML, they have a very elevated white blood cell count. And as a matter of fact, the median white blood cell count at diagnosis is greater greater than 150,000 uh, per microliter. And that is how we diagnose CML, or well, not how we, that's not how we technically diagnose CML, but that's what really points us towards CML, not so much the symptoms, as opposed to in acute leukemia where the symptoms are much more dramatic. 
So in CML, uh, the, the labs are going to be what really helps us out. CML and any chronic leukemia in, in general is more a disease of older people, so adults definitely more so the elderly, and the median age of diagnosis is 55. Kids do not get chronic leukemia in general, so median age of diagnosis is in the sixth decade of life, so this is really an adult disease. And survival with CML is actually quite good with therapy, particularly because we found out how we can treat this specific mutation and the specific disease that comes out of it. And that's just only happened in the last 15 years. So survival for chronic myelogenous leukemia with that chromosome 922 translocation actually has gotten a lot better because we know how to specifically treat it now. Uh, and so survival with CML is pretty good. So going back uh, to that specific translocation, you have chromosome 9, chromosome 22. Remember, the chromosomes get smaller as uh, you go up in number. And uh, it's uh, the BCR-ABL uh, translocation where you get that fusion protein where BCR, part of chromosome 22, uh, uh, tra uh, translocates and uh, becomes next to uh, ABL, which is part of chromosome 9. And so now you have a BCR-ABL fusion where they fuse together. And that makes a protein uh, known as the BCR-ABL fusion protein. And that changed chromosome that carries that BCR-ABL is known as the Philadelphia chromosome. So that's something to remember, uh, because remember, like I said, uh, I've said in all of these lectures that I've given you, step two and step three are not tests where you have to look at slides or karyotypes in general and, and make a diagnosis. It's not a pathology test, but you do need to remember pathologic findings in words. So whenever you see a translocation between 9 and 22, or if they say Philadelphia chromosome, or if they say BCR-ABL positive, that is going to be a diagnosis of CML. So um, as far as diagnosis, uh, you're going to be tipped off towards the diagnosis based on uh, this sort of indolent, long-term uh, disease of, of constitutional symptoms, uh, but what's also going to help you is, of course, your, uh, your CBC showing an elevated white blood cell count and a peripheral smear. So that's going to be your first step. You've got your CBC. Uh, in addition, with your CBC, you're going to have a peripheral smear. So those two come together because uh, peripheral smears are ordered in conjunction with CBCs. And so with your when you have your peripheral smear, you're going to be able to uh, differentiate the, you, well, you need to differentiate this from a normal elevation in white blood cell count. So the way we do this is a, uh, with leukocyte alkaline phosphatase. And leukocyte alkaline phosphatase is created by a uh, by normal white blood cells. So CML white blood cells will not be create uh, will not create leukocyte alkaline phosphatase or LAP uh, to the same degree because they're diseased. Uh, so what we want to get in a patient where we're suspecting CML is a LAP score, and if that LAP score is high then this patient has a leukemoid reaction. And what's a leukemoid reaction? It's just simply an elevation of white blood cells as a normal response due to disease. And there are lots of things that can cause white blood cells to be elevated. Chronic diseases, uh, autoimmune diseases. And so just because you have an elevated white blood cell count, yeah, it tips you off towards CML, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean CML. And so we, what we want to do is to see if these cells are uh, diseased cells or not? Are they functional cells? And that's what the LAP score tells us, the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase. If the leukocyte alkaline phosphatase is normal or high, then you've got normal white blood cells and they're doing what they should be doing. If, however, your leukocyte alkaline phosphatase is low relative to your white blood cell count, your high white blood cell count, then that is suspicious for CML. Uh, also, things you can see on CBC, you may see a pa the patient, uh, they have a normocytic anemia, but in general, the chronic leukemias compared to the acute leukemias, the other cell lines are not as severely affected, whereas in acute leukemia, you tend to see 
full-blown anemia and thrombocytopenia. Uh, there should be less than 5% blasts, and that's actually pertaining to a, the uh, bone marrow. And basophilia may show up on uh, the, uh, the CBC, and that's common in any leukemia. So in order to diagnose CML, yes, we have all these things like a white blood cell count that's more than 150,000, uh, a peripheral smear uh, that may show some immature cells, a leukocyte alkaline phosphatase that's low. Those are all suggestive of CML, but the best, more specific, accurate test to diagnose CML is a bone marrow biopsy. And the bone marrow biopsy will help you definitively diagnose chronic myelogenous leukemia. And what are we looking for? We're looking for that Philadelphia chromosome, that 9 to 22 translocation. And that's going to be most accurate and specific for CML. 95% of patients with CML have that uh, Philadelphia chromosome. The other 5% you don't need to worry about for the USMLE. So the best initial therapy for chronic myelogenous leukemia is a drug called imatinib. And what imatinib is, is it's a new drug that has came out in the last 15 years, and it is a uh, competitive uh, direct inhibitor of uh, that BCR-ABL fusion protein. And that BCR-ABL fusion protein is the protein of the disease. This is the, the, the protein that's causing the CML. So when you inhibit this protein, you essentially will cure the CML, but you have to continue giving the imatinib most of the time. And so the goal for CML uh, is to have one, after one to two years, to have 100% normal cells. Now, imatinib is the best initial therapy. However, in any leukemia, the most definitive therapy is always going to be bone marrow transplantation. And so if the patient does not respond to imatinib, then you need to give them bone marrow transplantation. Complications from CML include leukostasis, and this is a side effect of the fact that you have uh, a very high amount of white blood cells in your circulation, and they can actually sludge up uh, in, in the, the uh, circulation. So the symptoms here would include blurred loss of vision, priapism, uh, decreased cognition, respiratory distress. Uh, it's really similar to, to having thrombosis in your ocular uh, circulation, in the penis, or in the, uh, in the brain, or, uh, or in the respiratory circulation. So this is just, uh, these are just symptoms uh, that you should look out for in any leukemia, uh, not just CML. And if, uh, the, uh, if you have these symptoms, of course, you're going to have an elevated white blood cell count, but particularly in leukostasis, it's going to be very, very, very high, even more than the typical 150,000, that's the median at diagnosis. It's likely going to be even more than 300,000. And the treatment is a, uh, a, uh, an exchange transfusion, which is leukophoresis, where we're, we're uh, putting blood into the patient and taking blood out of the patient at the same time as an attempt to lower their white blood cell count. And that is the treatment for leukostasis. But remember, you can see leukostasis in any patient, CML, CLL, AML, ALL. Uh, that's a complication of any leukemia. Blast crisis is another complication of CML, and this is sort of the, the anvil that's sitting over the CML patient's head. This can happen at any time, and the symptoms that we see with CML are the symptoms, the same symptoms that we see with acute leukemia, in which we get a sudden drop in red blood cells, a sudden drop in platelets, a, slud, a sudden drop in white blood cells, and that's going to lead to symptoms of anemia, thrombocytopenia, easy bleeding, uh, bruising, susceptibility to infection. Essentially, you're going to have a disease uh, syndrome that's identical to acute leukemia. And in order to diagnose this, we have to have a bone marrow biopsy. The bone marrow biopsy will show an increase in blasts. So you have a patient with CML, suddenly they develop acute uh, 
uh, acute leukemia symptoms, repeat your bone marrow biopsy. You'll have a greater than 20% uh, of blasts on your uh, bone marrow biopsy. You can therefore diagnose blast crisis uh, in conjunction with the CML. And the treatment in this case, you must treat them with uh, bone marrow transplant or chemotherapy.